So Rob, I've got a few of the drawings of the many that we did. This was the first prototype, the first patent application where we've got a two wheel vehicle with a great big duck through the middle. But what was the inspiration? Where did you get the idea for putting a hole through the middle of a two wheel vehicle? Yeah, I think yeah, it's quite an interesting one. I mean, most of my career has been based in four wheel motorsport in both sports cars and in F1. And I've had, I had this idea, I can't actually pinpoint when I came up with a specific idea of having this, but ducks are used um, in a vast array of, of applications in the motorsport industry. And I did the tw Daytona 24 hour, pr perhaps in 2014, 2015, somewhere around that time. Yeah. And it was wet. It was extremely wet. Um, and, and there, you know, working on the, on the pit wall, uh, for a 24-hour race, you're sat there and you're watching all of the sports cars' prototypes um, on the banking, flat out around the you know that iconic Daytona circuit. Yeah. And what's apparent is is that when you're running in 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 rain, you know when there's lots of vehicles running in rain, there's actually a mist that hangs in the air. And when if you look carefully, when you see these prototypes going through that. You can actually, it's like watching a wind tunnel. You could see the aerodynamic flow. Yep, you can see the air entering, being pushed around the car. You can also see the air going underneath the car to a certain extent. You can definitely see the rooster tails out the back. You can see the air exiting the rear wing, exiting the rear diffuser. But what was really apparent, and is, is very apparent in, in modern sports car racing, is how much air travels through the car. That's it, not blasted around it, not blasted but manipulated around, through it. But picked up from the areas within the wheelbase and taken through the car and out the back. And it was at that point I thought, well, is there a patch packageable solution on a motorcycle where you could naturally pass a passage of air between the rider's legs to reduce aerodynamic drag? And that's perhaps where, it, where the initial inspiration came from. And that was what your patent was for, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think... Then you move on to the challenges of powertrain and packaging, um, something that's that's difficult or can be difficult with combustion. Well, that was our basic package, wasn't it? Two wheels yep. with a duct plunked on top. Yeah, I mean, the, the early versions, they started with combustion engines. Yep. Very, very limited on, on what's available that you could actually package in that. I mean, really, you're into small capacity singles or twin cylinder engines, maybe where you would up the performance with... with supercharging or hybridization to allow room for the duck because yeah. of course a motorcycle is such a tight package anyway how the heck are we going to get this extra I volume think what, what you want to do is you want to you know when you look at hybrid uh, 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 when you look at a naturally aspirated vehicle it's powertrain is one big lump, lump yeah and that's it you know when you move into a hybrid situation then then the things that create that energy are this combustion engine and then you may have a supercharger or a turbocharger, which acts in conjunction to create yeah. the same power as a naturally aspirated. And overall, that package is likely to be smaller, or it's certainly going to be split into two significant pieces. Because that's the difficulty I had, is how do we take a conventional layout and put a duct through? But as you say, if you go for a hybrid or an electric powertrain, immediately we've got more flexibility to play around with the big volumes. Yeah, I think that's the key. The key to this concept is what you're looking for, is you're looking for flexibility of powertrain packaging. So be that be that um, uh, heat rejection, be that um, the actual uh, 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 the actual engine, the machine itself, which is creating the energy, gearboxes and other other supporting systems, exhausts or intakes. Uh, and, and what you've got on, a, on an EV machine is, is you've got one electric machine, possibly. I mean, you could run two or three or four, but essentially one electric machine, an electric motor that sits in a fixed position. Yeah. And then every single part of that powertrain, other than the electric machine, can be, in theory, distributed anywhere throughout the motorcycle. And, that, and, and if you can make that electric powertrain to sit within the volumes that are available... It's at that point then that you can start to look to exploit unoccupied space through the motorcycle to create a duck. It suddenly makes the package viable and that you can get the aerodynamic gains you're after. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, what you're doing here is you're taking sort of F1-style packaging. And, and trying to put it onto two wheels. And you're putting it into two wheels. Yeah. Um, you know, having worked in Formula 1 for a number of years, what is clear 
that once the body works off, uh, not just the external body work, but the under under aero body work, when you look at the packaging of a Formula One car, you would not be able to pour a pint of milk in. Mm. It is so densely occupied yeah. um, that there's no space for anything. But that's what we were trying to achieve on this, to get it in such a much smaller vehicle 